Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Pillar Talk, the podcast series where we spill our little secrets and today we have a very interesting topic for you guys. So in this episode we're gonna talk about the art of detachment. So this is for anyone, honestly all the girls out there that have maybe some moments where you started liking someone, you got really re impressed by them you start getting expectations and then someone destroys your hopes and you get attached and when you get attached you let your emotions take control over you and then you just feel helpless and out of control so we're going to kind of explain how you can regain back your control and the secret just lies in practicing how to detach yourself from people and from situations yes i would say i have on my side the queen of detachment so i barely have friends that are so detached like celine so i'm always like impressed by it and she's also like an absolute expert when it comes to i would say mindset and relationship in general so if you guys are interested in knowing more about her under this video description you will find her instagram but i think all of us went through a phase of being super Heartbreak. emotional attached to someone so i would say let's start with a few topics like with a few like with a few stories or not i guess like before we start the stories i think it's important to kind of define yeah that's good what is detachment that's so really good in my opinion i'm gonna say something just one sentence explanation for me detachment is just simply learning how to have no emotions when people do something to you. So you have no control over whatever someone does to you. Whether they hurt you or they don't, whatever they do, you won't actually get emotionally affected by it. Yes, 100%. I would also say um, detachment is also like knowing who you are as a person without like having that partner on your side without having that friend on your side because I think this is when you really can detach when you are sure about yourself and you know who you are and what you bring to the table mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely I completely agree with you so let's begin with the storytelling Maribel yes. would you like to start I would love to start with it because I think with storytelling everything it's a little bit easier to understand you know yeah. so that you know exactly what kind of situations we have been in when it comes to oh, yeah attachment detachment and all these things so for me it was a phase in my life um, about around I would say like two or three years ago and you guys know about this phase where I lost all my money in my business like my business was not running good at all and I met a guy in this time so and I always say the worst time to date someone or to look out for a partner is when your life is literally falling apart mm -hmm. Because the thing that happened is when you're looking for someone, um, when you're not in a good, I would say, life phase, you're looking for someone who makes you maybe happy. Like you're looking for someone who can bring joy into your life, who can bring new opportunities into your life. But you need to realize you're the only person who can save you. Of course, there are people out there that met their partner and now their life is in some kind of way better because their partner broke some opportunities with it. But what happened is that you get attached to the people because it's not only about the person itself at some point. It's about the opportunities that this person brings with it, the energy that this person gives you, the feeling that this person gives you. So what happened in my case was um, back then I lost all my money. Like we were so broke that we even needed to take loans. And and I don't want to say that I was depressed, but I was frustrated kind of about life. I was frustrated and I was super disappointed because I worked so hard for my dreams. I worked so hard on this business and nothing worked out. And the funny thing was that actually it was my fault. Like everything that happened to me in this situation was just a result of all the decisions that i took in the past and all the laziness that i had on me you know what i mean like i wasn't re ready to really take my my life and to turn it around you know what i mean like to really take the necess necessarily steps to really change it so and i met this guy and this guy oh my god like the story is so like this story is deep like it's so deep because we need to even go back to my teenage time 
So this guy is a guy that I met in, let's say, in high school. So I'm in Germany, but I will call it now high school. So I was like around... I don't know, like 13 years old. So, and back then I was never the cool kid. Like I was the type of girl that got bullied a lot. A lot of people were always telling me, hey, you will never make it to something. So I was always the type of girl that was not cool at all. So, and he, for example, he was also going with me to my high school. And he was also the kind of guy that was always the weirdo that the people were making fun of and everything. And after high school, we stayed kind of friends, but it was more like, yeah, kind of like that. So, and I remember that once I invited him also to my birthday party where also my ex-boyfriend was and we had a good time. So it was like a house party where a lot of mixed friends were there. You know what I mean? So we were always like kind of bro and sis and everything. And I remember when I was, and it's so funny. Oh my God, guys, you can manifest literally everything good and bad things. I remember when I was in Switzerland at this time where I met him again, like when our time started, like, you know, our love story kind of thing. I was in Switzerland for around like six to eight weeks and I came back to my home city. And when I arrived, I was like, totally like hey I want to have fun I want to experience something because the six and seven eight weeks that I was in Switzerland I was just on a monk mode I was just working so and I remember how I told my best friends when we were going for like a picnic hey oh my god I want to have excitements like why can't someone just come into my life and bring me some excitement and literally I don't even care if it's a bit toxic so I want to have excitement in my life this is the way how I was thinking in this time so literally it's obviously that I was fucking broke and not achieving something in my life because this is the type of attitude that I had so and then I was telling her that and she said like hey don't say that imagine it happens really and literally few days later I was around with one of my other friends and he texted me on Snapchat like I wasn't even using red flag I wasn't even using Snapchat at that time so <laughs> if a guy ever asks you for your Snapchat when he first meets you don't even give him any contact that's red flag okay <laughs> only for your number just just little advice big sis advice oh my god yeah he was texting me on Snapchat because he's the type of guy that he doesn't use like really whatsapp or something he used most of the time snapchat yeah so and he were like sh showing no wait it was like that i did a story on snapchat <laughs> i yeah i'm I, I, I was your snapchat i yeah. was the red flag to be honest at this time so i did a story on snapchat and i said like hey are there any house parties on this weekend just came from switzerland something like that and he directly uh, reached out to me on snapchat and said hey actually there is a house party from a friend of mine if you want feel free to join so and what i knew till that point before i met him that he were doing like some entrepreneur stuff too and everything but i was still seeing him more as a friend so and in short we arrived at that party it was a nice vibe i started talking with him and the moment we started talking oh my god i get goosebumps we literally you remember this guy that i met in barcelona where i was like oh my god you know yeah. this is the way how i talked to him like i was completely like full focused on that conversation i was like wow you know what i mean it was a completely really good flowing conversation and we talked about everything we talked about the the time after school we talked about our uh, um, companies and everything because he also started entrepreneurship he was doing something with finances and everything and um yeah and then after that um we uh, started flirting like we started flirting a lot and he's the type of guy oh my god ladies and gentlemen everyone that knows him told me like oh man he's really charismatic and very confident like he was known for that but be careful he's very manipulative damn ladies and gentlemen this man knew how to literally like you know like seduce you yeah, i would yeah, say yeah. he put you off your feet like he feet. knows how to do it like this man he studied all the dark psychology books 
ever that you ever have seen in your fucking life like and he was into sales like mm. it was his job like and he loved that so and he was asking me out if I want to go to a date and everything so and yeah and then we started dating and the thing with him was that he was love booming me like crazy like this man literally did everything for me for literally two weeks like I was telling him hey I was hungry he was five minutes later at my place brought me some food when I was telling him wow I wanted to see you my friends wanted to meet you he was directly showing up he was picking me up he was driving, driving me to places he directly introduced me to his friends and everything like literally in these two weeks we experienced so much and I got kind of so attached and so used to this okay he's doing everything for me that as soon as he literally turned around and literally switched the complete game and wasn't giving me attention at all I was feeling like a piece of shit so because I was so used to this kind of love yeah to this kind of attention mm. that he was giving me that I was confused and I was questioning everything because you need to imagine he was never really my type if not I would have already started something with him sis lowered her standards and then ended up getting hurt <laughs> by this man that's the worst type of pain I'm sure all of you girls including me has like really I relate to this so hard. I'm about to cry I swear yeah anyways like he was not even my type to be honest like he is not like ah uh, I hope he doesn't see this podcast <laughs> <laughs> like he's Whatever. kind of the type of guy that is more like you know like the normal guy like he's not ugly but he is now like not a model or something okay. he's lucky medium ugly so and this guy but he was so charismatic and had such a nice personality so and what ended up happening is that um he started love booming me and then from one day to another he changed completely he was super distant and i was questioning myself because when you're in a situation where you're lowering your standard for someone and this person is showing you all the love in the world and from one day to another this person is super distant you when when you don't have like a strong self-esteem what i absolutely didn't, don't had at this time like I had no strong self-belief I was really questioning myself mm -hmm. I really asked myself okay what's wrong with me like did I some did like did she do yeah, I know that you run through these these thoughts in your head like did I send him too many messages maybe and then you start looking back at your whatsapp messages and you're like oh my god I sent him maybe one text too much like I would yes. use I used to count like in a row how many messages compared to the ratio of him messaging me to see am I the clingy one like did I show him too much attention that he's like turned off now yes uh, so. it ex that's exactly how it was and it right. got worse yeah. because the thing is that then uh, somehow like he was attached and uh, detached like super distant and then another day he was super attached to me and he wanted to be around me and he was always super busy because he was also building his business and on top of that so to really give you guys a proper insight into the story he was also going through a hard time in his business like his business was not running the best he was super stressed and he has a lot of I would say uh, setbacks right now going on in his life like um, family members died for example so and we both were kind of our happy place together you know what I mean like he needed me and I needed him it was super super toxic so and what ended up happening of course is that we created like a crazy attachment to each other and I was the one that was even more attached to him because he was more the one that got distance always like the one that always was love booming me and then he got super distant and everything and he always had the feeling like he is on the I would say upper hand yes. you know what I mean yeah, like yeah, he yeah. has the control and power yes. of everything mm -hmm. so and I literally like I'm so embarrassed from myself of all the things that I did like I literally I literally run, uh, run like followed this guy I chased this guy like a little bitch like literally I chased this guy like crazy like every time when he did not call me I got super disappointed I gave him like I don't know how many calls I double text like I was so fucking embarrassed of uh, of myself I have 
secondhand embarrassment for really? you. Oh my god! Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. I also myself did some embarrassing things. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, like, and I was like chasing him and everything like that. And um, yeah. And at the end, to be honest, um, for me, the only way how I could really detach myself at the end of the day was when I got my life together. So I built myself an unhappy place for myself and on top of that i changed my location because at this time my parents were going to the dominican republic to live there for six months and i thought okay i always wanted to travel and uh, live the typical i would say digital nomad life and then i went with my parents to the dominican republic so i was no longer at the same place with them because every single time I saw him or something reminded me of him. His office was always on the way um, home to me. Also, one really crazy story, and this is something you will not believe me that. Even when I was going for like out, I was going for parties, I always met people that knew him and that were talking about him because he was very, very known. And once even I went to like a party and it was like a group of different people and there was a girl and she were asking me where I'm from and I told her like, hey, I went to this and the school and then she said, oh, then you know X, Y, Z. And then I said like, actually, yes. And at the end, it was his fucking ex-girlfriend and I was partying with his ex-girlfriend. Like this story is actually so much more dramatic than how I'm explaining it. But I think you guys get it what I wanted to tell you, like how you can get so attached to people. So this is my story. So let's psychoanalyze oh, this yes, for a second. Let's get into this to actually ex- like understand why you were in a place of being so attached. And I think, as you said before, you were in a place where you weren't 100% happy with yourself. And so when you're not at, when you're not full in your heart and you don't fully, fully love yourself or you've just proven to yourself that you're good with the things you're good at, like you're, you're, you're good with your business in your situation or you have good friends and you just have so much pillars like supporting you when you don't have that. It's so easy to depend and give that missing feeling and have someone fill that gap for you. And then when you're so high on that feeling, as soon as that's gone, you want to chase it and you want it back. And that's actually the feeling of self having no control because you're depending yourself on someone else's outcome. So I think the first step, I think even for me, I'm speaking to myself, is like the first step of detaching from someone is helping yourself and making sure that you have all the tools, all the good things first before you look for something else in other people. You shouldn't actually look for love in other people. You should find love in yourself. You shouldn't look for someone else, depending on someone else, for a certain skill. You should learn that skill by yourself. Like you should be so self-sufficient in every single area of your life that other people are just an addition to it. They're not filling a a hole in your heart, right? Yeah, I 100% agree. So um, that's also the reason this man changed me for the good to be honest Mm -hmm. like i needed to touch rock Mm -hmm. bottom to really become the person that i am today i thought back then oh i already live a good life okay the business is not running so good but i already felt like i'm one of the one percent type of girls but i wasn't it at all so after that i really made sure that i scale up this business i really made sure to take care of my health to really get in shape i really made sure to take off care of my mindset like i made a completely shift and maybe this is a wrong approach but for me it was the best kind of revenge because i felt in some kind of way that he was playing games with me and he was actually obviously playing games with me you know what i mean so he knew knew what he was doing with me so and to be honest like my like the best revenge that I could do for myself was really to get better than him to really become a better person than him and get everything that he wanted and that I also anyways wanted for myself you know what I mean 
So, um, yeah, but I also think to add something to it, um, you mentioned that a lot of people that get attached are people that are lacking something. Yeah. Of course, I would say this is like the, the number one, the first um, issue that they have for the first reason. But I think also another one, and I think this is the second level of being really attached to someone, it's the creation of a habit. You know, that the people yes. are so used to mm. the energy of this person mm. and also the kind of, you yeah. know, it's the same thing with my ex-boyfriend. Like the first thing that I thought about before I broke up with him, oh shit, who, who I should now do all these movie nights. You know what I mean? Mm. Like when I go there, yeah. with who I should go there, what I should do then there, because you created such a crazy habit with this person and it's difficult for you to, you know, Yeah, to live and you know, you know what is now I thought of the third reason why people get attached. The third reason is most people, especially girls, I know you guys are all guilty of this, is coming up with situations in your head and creating this ideal version of someone. And then when that person's not showing up as that person, you're like, oh, my God. I you get so it. disappointed. You get so disappointed. And like, ladies, I've haven't, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been through that road where I set such a high expectation of someone because they impress you. Of course, in the beginning, every man is going to give you the best version of him. But eventually the guy's going to get tired when he gets what he wants. He's going to just be himself. And so when he becomes himself, you're going to get disappointed. So the reason why you get disappointed is because you create illusions in your head that he is this perfect Prince Charming. He's maybe in the first two weeks buying you flowers. He's texting you good morning every single day. And then one day he doesn't send you text message. Oh, did I do something wrong? No, you didn't do something wrong. He just became himself. He's just being himself he just stopped be pretending to be that ideal version so the thing i can tell you girls is observe and less focusing on what you hear from him mm -hmm. a lot of guys are very good at lying and they know exactly that we fall in love with what we hear and i say this oftentimes in my reels and my videos like girl stop like coming up with ideas stop falling in love with what he what you hear fall in fall in love with just what you see you need to see he needs to show you men are about action if he's just telling you oh you're so special oh i've never felt this way about someone and then like he's not consistent and he's actually not prioritizing you those are actions you need to focus on those actions and just see it objectively like a man is also seeing things objectively That's a really, really good point. That's such a good point. Observe, oh my God. Observe. That's it. Don't hear. <sighs> <It's> Become deaf. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. You know, it reminds me of the topic that we were talking about in the other episode that we never uploaded, by the way, um, where we said that men settle with the woman that accept their, um, I would say, flaws. yes. Really? Not, not flaws, like, let me explain it to you. We said, for example, that sometimes men realize, okay, this woman takes too much effort for me and I need to play that kind of fake role that oh, yes. I actually, that's not me yeah. for a long time and it's very exhausting. And then they settle for the woman that al already accepts kind of like the bar minimum. So, and we were then analyzing like our previous dating life, especially me. And there was one guy, guys, you know this guy. It's from the podcast episode where I talked about, hey, single ladies, good things take time. This guy. And few weeks before, I was talking to friends of him, from him. And they were telling me like, wow, Maribel, it's so crazy that he lent you and everything. Because all his ex-girlfriends, they were kind of weird these were like kind of super trashy woman and i was like wow that's so weird because for me in my eyes he's actually a high value man you know what i mean like he brings a lot of things to the table and has a lot of values and things like that so and when i was seeing his ex-girlfriends it did not it did not make any sense and this should actually be 
a red flag, a warning for me. So if their ex-girlfriends are super, super trashy, then you actually know what they're usually settling for. So, and this is actually their standards where they feel the most comfortable with. When there's, there's a woman, they have been like two, three years together and you see they have been with other women also for a longer time together that are on the same level, you know what their standard is. Of course, they will throw you away or will never um never be your boyfriend because you are you're you're more high maintenance for them like they need to put more effort into things to so that you feel comfortable on the journey that you give them at the end of the day on the long run what they want you know what i mean so mm, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> can't relate no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so yeah i would yeah. say um i want to give you girls a tip with detachment like i'm gonna drop a little gem here actually and then we're gonna go maybe into a storytelling of of an example where oh, i yeah. was I'm completely curious. completely heartbroken and became this new version of me oh, we all have one heartbreak that just redefines who we are right true that fact like yeah the, that Heartbreaks that's are the best things and, that can happen to you at the know, end of the and day i always say one heartbreak a year makes another glow up again like true that i that's that's how i am the way i am man like these these men in the past they they built me so shout out to all my exes <laughs> You guys are the OGs, like the top Gs to make me the way I am today. Honestly, like pain actually brings the best out of you when you make it, when you go on an upward spiral. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to share with you guys a, a story um, of my, let's say, second real heartbreak. Because the first one, I was young, I was 16, doesn't count. But I'm talking about the real heartbreak where it's like the first time you meet like your soulmate like you think you met your soulmate and then you have this like period of pure passion and it feels like everything feels like a fairy tale in a movie and this happened funny a year ago uh, let's say a year and a half ago wow so close yeah really yeah wow, it was like a year and fun. a half ago when actually i'm Poor good baby. now i'm very healed now i, I like so it's all good <laughs> But um, I had a, so context, I was in a relationship for three years and it was a very healthy relationship. And when we broke up due to long distance, I went back to Shanghai where I was completely single. I didn't actually, ironically, I never cried from my three year relationship. Really? Never, never you cried. Mean from the heartbreak yeah i also I, didn't I, I didn't i didn't have relationship. yeah i didn't have a, it's so weird right like i didn't have a heartbreak from my three-year relationship but i had a heartbreak with my one month flame because, you know it was like when you think about it it was a healthy relationship yeah you know what i mean and it was a mutual so, agreement yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. mutually like we said okay it's time to end things yeah. but so like literally three weeks after i broke up with my ex-boyfriend i met this um this football player he's like a professional national team football player in china and i met him at this party and the moment we met it was just instantly like i know you from somewhere like in a way like i feel like i know you for a long time <laughs> it was very natural and i was just we just locked eyes because he looks like me kind of like he's also mixed he's mixed asian mix something else makes european i'm not gonna disclose like the actual nationality Ooh, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's not go too much in detail um but basically from day one he showed like all his availability to me he was like i just got out of a three-year relationship too because of long distance and like now i've been single and i'm so ready to like start dating again and we just kind of related on so many levels because i'm like oh my god me too i also got out of relationship and so we got so excited even both of us for the first date because he's like oh my god i haven't been on a date for three years and i'm like oh my god me too so it was all like from the beginning it was just such good vibes and good feeling and i have to say like i fell so hard for this man um because he was first of all obviously he was very good looking like every single girl in the club was like 
putting themselves on him it was crazy like the type of things he told me that these girls do to get his attention insane but so it's like he's good looking we had like the same values as well like in terms of personal growth development he's smart same humor personality wise he's great and then the third part was he spoiled me he was rich like and this was the first time i had experienced dating with rich men because normally i tend to always be dating broke guys <laughs> i have a tendency but like so this guy like you know he's making fifty thousand dollars a month working for the national football team he was good looking and there was just this chemistry that was just undescribable like everything was just like 10 out of 10 and so for one month we saw each other every single day 10 hours every day we would sleep over maybe like every night and then maybe there's one day after the fourth day where we're not we're taking a, a half day break but it was just intense for one month we saw each other every single day um back and back back and then all of a sudden <clears throat> he starts becoming cold and he went on like a weekend trip to Hangzhou of course always as soon as they become cold ask yourself why yeah why the weekend trip and um <laughs> when he went on this trip he started telling me like hey i got recent news that i can go back to norway to see my family because at that time it was covid and in china it's very difficult to like leave the country so i was like okay cool so he was telling me hey i'm gonna be gone for two weeks i'm gonna go back to oh i said the country <laughs> let's hope it's fine so he's gonna go back to his home country and gatekeep good gatekeep okay gatekeep don't say anything don't reveal any of this but so he went back to his home country um and before he left he's like hey Celine, i just want to let you know like um <laughs> my ex still lives in my apartment and i was like what do you mean your ex still lives in your apartment? You said you guys broke up like a couple months ago. And he's like, yeah, we did, but... Turns out he never broke up with his girlfriend and he told me that he did. And so basically he told this his girl that they're on a break. But now that he's finally going back to Norway of course he's gonna fix things with her and like i'm not dumb if another bitch <coughs> is living in his apartment of course they're gonna get back together and they're gonna hook up so i went through this major feeling of like deception like i felt like i was lied to mm -hmm. and it got to a point where i could not sleep for one week because i was running through mm -hmm. scenarios in my head like what happens if he chooses her instead of oh. me or if if he chooses me what do i have to do so he doesn't go back to his girlfriend like i was at such a level of like questioning my self-worth when it's not about me it's about him he's the guy that was lying he's this cheap low quality man that would lie because actually if you want if you know the best for yourself you gotta you gotta get the best type of man that doesn't lie that doesn't cheat and he did that so i didn't even think about that i didn't think if i was healed now i would just be like he's not meant for me he's not made for me because my future partner is never going to lie and is never gonna cheat but instead my unhealed version was like oh my god i just hope he chooses me and when you're so like like i said in the beginning if you're not so confident, you don't fully love yourself and you don't have all those levels in your life where you're at the top, you're going to like attach yourself to someone because you're so into him. And so this, after all, long story short, how I detached to him and how he came running back to me, he ran back to me um, and this man tried so hard to get me back that he ended up paying six thousand dollars on my high ticket coaching on my investing program just so he can talk to me again because i blocked this man on every Damn. single platform and so let me tell you the secret how i was able to completely detach from him and let him crawl back to me it's the mindset that you have other options that you have to accept you say okay this is clearly not for me Everything is happening for a reason. He's going back because he's a shit person. And that's it. There's no other like if and and. He's just a shitty person. And the universe is trying to teach you a lesson to just accept your standard. 
you are your standard. So if you accept that he's going to come back and give you another chance and you give him another chance, that's how low your standard is. But if you set a standard and you're like, I'm a type of woman that only attracts men that, that are honest and that want me for me, like they choose me as priority. They don't, I, I'm not an option. I don't deserve to be treated as an option. As soon as you tell yourself that, then you're in a position to say no to things that don't serve you. And my biggest secret was that I turned my mindset to think, oh my God, he's the best. I can't find anyone better than him. I stopped thinking that way and I start thinking, mm -hmm. I have <laughs> other options. So a lot of the times when we get attached to someone, it's because we think they're the only best option. And when you think that they're the only best option, you're so afraid of losing them. And you need to let go of that. You need to let go of the illusion that they're the best option. And you need to trust yourself and believe that you have other options because you're that girl. Wow, this was a heavy story. I already knew that story before. But um, yeah, it's, it's really, really heavy. So from going like seeing each other every day for one month to like... You know what I mean? And it's a habit. Yeah, it's a habit. And I had a habit of yeah. seeing him every single day. And then I can just imagine how you one felt day like. it was just gone, just like that. I can imagine how you felt like. And it's so interesting what you said regarding the scarcity, because actually like being attached to someone has something to do that you have like a scarcity mindset. Yeah. And you should really ask yourself, why do you have that scarcity mindset? And for example, to come back to our d dating life again. So for example, I back then had the scarcity mindset because I wasn't seeing a lot of guys. So and I'm still not seeing a lot of guys, to be mm -hmm. honest. But especially yeah. in this time of my life, like not a lot of guys were reaching out to me. You know what I mean? Like also, especially a lot of guys were not really taking me seriously. Like I was a completely different person and they were obviously not taking me seriously. You know what I mean? Now it's a bit different. Even if I'm not dating a lot of guys, guys are treating me completely different. So, and I think even if you're not the type of girl that likes to date around like crazy, I think you should give yourself still like a little bit of space to have other options or to show yourself, okay, there are some other options because if not, you will just settle for the trash because you think, okay, that's my option. I'm, I'm kind of like, I have pressure. I need to find someone now and this is what I have. Okay, let me settle for it. But actually there's so many options. Also, when you think about it, this is something that I always like to um, have on my mind is trust me, you're right now crying about this guy. In one year, you will cry about another guy. Mm -hmm. Like, in facts, the, the, the year after, <laughs> you will cry about another guy again. Like, you will get over it. Until and you meet your husband, right? Yes, you will get over it. Oh. And there will be so many guys. Like, when you think about it, like, the last guy that you were dating, that you met, you thought one year ago, oh, my God, the guy that I have right now is already good. I will never find someone. Bam, one year later, you found someone that is even better. Yeah. So it always also depends on you. The more you level up, the more you better yourself, the better you also attract at the end of the day. So if you want to attract better, you just got to be better. So and that's pretty it. That's facts. You can actually... <laughs> She's like, preach. You preach, girl. You do your thing. You preach. Facts. Um, honestly, girls, like, there is no <laughs> limit. You can, <laughs> you can date, like, a younger version of Chris Hemsworth, who is completely single, who is rich, who's good looking, who's smart, who's just, like, a, a super high value man. But you just gotta level up to and also ask yourself, be really honest with yourself. Like, are you that girl that can attract mm -hmm. a guy like that? Because honestly, I firmly believe everyone can like you can literally you can change the way you look and i'm not talking surgery or like doing makeup or it's just a, a, a shift once you shift you literally just somehow like like for me i wasn't i wasn't so i had a phase of my life where i was just a little bit chubbier like i had some baby fat and stuff like that but i was never fat But if you looked at me one year ago, my face completely changed. I don't know what it is, but it's just that inner confidence that shines through the way you carry yourself. And also your skin starts glowing. Your, 
your face just like transforms when you transform internally but you just have to do that inner work yes yeah. and here's a little reminder for all the girls that are ready to go through that transformation that's are saying hey i want to become that girl i want to become the version of myself that i would look up to and can attract all these good opportunities all these i would say healthy relationships then you should definitely check out the link under my video description or under my podcast description for the own it inner circle where i completely documented my whole rebranding reinvention journey because back then four or five years ago i was a completely shy girl literally like a four of ten that That had no confidence at all and literally became the woman that I would look up to. It's a community of women all around the world and it's cheaper than your Netflix membership, $14 a month. So definitely an investment that is worth it into yourself. Yeah. And if you're looking to heal and like find your feminine energy again, also I'll put some information below so you can find me as well. Yes. So, and something that I want to add to it, um, to uh, the art of detachment and all these things around this topic, I don't know if you're the same girl like me, but every time when I'm fe I have the fear to lose someone, let's say same example with the guy that I was telling you guys about where my business not, was not running good and I got super emotional attached and got super toxic at the end so one thing that I was doing at this time is I was tr I was trying to give him more attention I was trying to give him more love because I thought okay hey this is what he's missing and yeah. he will like me more yes. when I give him more attention oh. so and one thing that I really realized is you can't convince a motherfucker about yourself by giving him something that he don't like or that he doesn't appreciate so and he wasn't appreciating me at all and he wasn't liking me at all as you can see if not he would not treat me like that so everything that you love or everything that you appreciate you will you will you will treat it differently you know what i mean like if you have a really really nice treasure let's say you have a diamond in front of you you will treat that diamond like a diamond you know you will know the worth of this diamond you will not treat it like yeah, shit so and you need to stop yourself giving these people more attention and more love because actually this is not the way at all to win them for yourself because they don't like it they don't like it that you call them they don't like it that you text them etc especially if you're in the situation let's say you want to win them again what actually doesn't make sense because you are in this i would say toxic relationship for a reason like you know you know it's not good for you at the end of the day but if you say okay i want to win this person for myself again you gotta de detach yourself from them and then you will see how they will come back to you and one way to, to do that is you just mirror exactly what they do if they don't text you back one day you also don't text them back if they're not like suggesting a date the next time you also just lean back and focus on your day-to-day -day, like what you need to do i give you an example of that because i want to add this is so good so like i um was seeing this guy for two months and i started really liking him um and i got attached like one month in because this guy i thought was so green flags he was consistent he was messaging me every single day bullshit <laughs> yeah um he w we were talking about like marriage and like what we want in our future like like ideal like relationship and blah blah, blah. so i thought he was so green flags and then slowly he started breadcrumbing me so slowly he gave me less attention less attention and at one point he was really like absent because his grand father passed away so you know what i did instead of well i was also trying to be empathetic person in general but you know what i did hmm. the most embarrassing thing i did oh shit yes. i bought him <laughs> flowers a girl buying a guy flowers okay like on one side his granddad yeah. did die but still like i can't believe i did that and you know the thing was he didn't change his behavior at all like i tried to get be really like oh i'm there for you if you need it and blah 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 like you need to think about if that happened to you if you really love the person and you really care about person even if you know someone something happens where it really affects you your behavior your treatment wouldn't change to the person that you care about so i ended up um what i did was at one point i was being very honest with myself 
and i said you know what like i actually am falling back to being attached i don't want to be the same as what i did with the other guy so i kind of gave him an ultimatum i gave him an ultimatum so i said hey look um what's up like first let's check in with each other i feel like you're being distant And I wasn't coming from a place of neediness. I just said, hey, this is what I observe. I noticed that you're being distant with me. Um, Is this also I just want to check up on like us. Do you need time? Do you need space or like what's up? And he told me after some time of talking, he's like, hey, look, honestly, I feel like I'm just not ready for a relationship and I feel really emotionally unavailable. And when I got that answer, that was all the answer I needed. I just told him, hey, like, I really like you, but I, it's all in or nothing. And I don't want to continue dating you if I know that you're not going to be able to be emotionally available. I'm, and so I told him, like, hey, I think we should just not talk at all. And when you're ready to put 100% in, you can come back to me. So in that case, I did give him a second chance because he did nothing wrong. He's just not giving me 100%. And you know what happened? He never came back. So, you know, sometimes they can come back and sometimes it depends on the type of guy. If he's a man of intention and he's a real man, he's not going to play games with you. But if he's a little boy and he just loves the attention and he's going to probably come back and just to see if you're still interested to like validate himself um that's a different story but all in all sometimes you have to be brave to walk away that's one thing of the art of attachment is you have to actually believe in your whole heart i can walk away and i have nothing to lose because if you're just saying hey look i'm just gonna go away for a little bit when you're ready but you're actually still attached to him he can feel it energetically. You just literally need to believe like, that's it. This is it. I'm ready to go. I'm letting go. And you need to really believe it. You yeah. need to walk away. This was a really good example. Um, actually, it reminds me of something. Sometimes you need to uh, see the truth. So like she said, she were really like having this yeah serious talk with this guy. Like, hey, I'm seeing something change. Um, like how do you see things like how you want to continue like kind of like what what is going on so and sometimes i see myself being scared to ask that question because i'm scared i could lose that person or it's too much because of course you need to have a feeling of it if you're asking a person let's say after the second day okay what's going on with us i think it's too early you know what i mean but if you're with a person for a longer period of time and you're seeing okay something really changed and it's not like changing for the good again then you should really take be brave and to ask this person or to confront this person with it because someone that genuinely likes you and generally wants to be together with you will not take this as something negative this person will look out for a way how he can make things work again you know what i mean and i think also when you ask yourself that you're in this situation where you need to ask that question and you need to ask this person okay what's wrong this is actually already like a sign for you this is already a sign for you okay maybe this person is not ready or maybe this person is not for me or this person is maybe distracted because when we think about it or even the boys like when we are really interested in someone and we really want to build something with someone we will give this person our attention of course do not expect people to text you 24 7 because you also need to understand for example um for, for example what i always ask myself the question is it convenient for this person to text me 24 7 right now if this is a person that is a business owner is 24 7 like kind of in calls of course this person will not text me every single morning every single lunchtime, every single evening time whatever this person will probably leave a message once a day you know and for other people it's like oh my god he's not texting you at all he's ignoring you etc you always need to ask yourself okay if, is it even convenient for this person to leave a text 24 7 for me so really think about it okay how does the life of this person looks like so and if you have a person let's say 
that actually can take the time and text you and can, um, let's say, call you, whatever it is, and he's not doing it at all, then it should be for you like an eye opener. Okay, maybe this person is not as interested. So to add on to that, <clears throat> because I've also dated a lot of guys who were business people, very busy people. And the differentiator between one that really likes me and the one that maybe isn't putting me as priority is even if he is really busy, he will at least send you a message beforehand like, hey, I'm going into a meeting. Hey, I'm going to have an important call. Let's talk when I'm done. So him like thinking ahead of your feelings and saying just setting um like us like a just letting you know that hey like there's nothing off with us just i'm really busy right now him checking up on you is a green flag so that's also something like a guy can be super busy but i still believe even if he's the president of the united states he's still going to communicate mm -hmm. with you about yeah. that At the end of the day, guys are not dumb. Like they need, they know what they need to do to, uh, to make us happy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like guys know that we want to have attention. Guys know that they, we want that they call us, uh, that they plan things, etc. If he's not putting the work in, he's maybe not interested enough in you. Or maybe it can also be that he's actually not the type of guy that is for you. Maybe this is a standard. Maybe this is normal for him. It can also be. But actually, they know what women want at the end of the day. Because if the best girl ever like a 10 of 10 girl like their absolute dream girl will now be in front of them and they would have the chance to make this dream girl their girl they will do everything imagine what they will do they will probably text her 24 7 they will send her flowers etc etc so uh, as harsh as it sounds i'm sorry to say that but maybe you are not their dream girl you know what i mean so but there are plenty of other guys that you are absolutely their dream girl so stop focusing on a guy that is not for you in this case yeah and one thing to add ladies like how you're gonna be able to master the art of detachment is to accept the fact that you cannot control what someone does to you and whether they decide to choose you or not actually it's all about just accepting the fact that everyone is just here for an experience you're here in this life to just have beautiful experiences or painful experiences with people that are meant to teach you a lesson and help you grow and the moment you accept the fact that a person's here just for a certain period of time they're not here for you forever that is the moment you can just detach yourself and that way you, you you're no longer disappointed because when you're expecting that someone's gonna behave a certain way or they're gonna be a certain person in a certain role in your life that's when you set an expectation and when you set an expectation that's how you can get disappointed because no one's gonna like come into your life saying oh i'm gonna make this person happy it's my duty to make you happy facts at Experience. the end of the day you're the one who needs to make yourself happy yeah no one has the responsibility to make you happy and this is i think one of the i would say one of the saddest things that i needed to realize in my life like hey no one is here to save you no one is here to make you happy because i think when we th when i think about my childhood especially like even like all the mo movies that I was uh, watching, all the series and everything, it was always like, hey, your man should make you happy. Your partner should make you happy. You know what I mean? But it's something completely wrong. Of course, he should be be a positive part of your life. But at the end of the day, you should have your solid foundation of happiness by yourself. Because at the end of the day, everyone's gonna leave you at the end. Your yeah. mom your friends like the only person you have is yourself and facts. everyone else is part of an experience facts i think this was a very good end for this podcast yeah. here so i know we had like a harsh talk with your ladies and you're like fuck 
but now you have work to do bitch like you have work to do you you need to change your life around if you are right now the type of girl that is super emotional attached to someone so think about everything i hope you made yourself some notes also feel free to re-watch the podcast episode i know so many girls um in my community they re-watch it and they make some notes and they directly get started so see it as a lesson i would say and like i said if you're interested in uh, rebranding reinventing yourself so starting from new i would say and being in a community of women like us that are helping each other giving each other advices when it comes to health relationship and mindset under this video description is a link to the own it inner circle feel free to join you will also see under this video description the name of celine's instagram yes. personal brand so that you can connect with her so she's a super expert when it comes to feminine energy also check this out and yeah I would say see you next time. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs>